determined to trust him no matter what the situation is no matter what the circumstances may be be determined to trust the one the only true living God because he is a God that shall not lie hallelujah thank you Jesus what he says shall come to pass for your very life be determined to trust him hallelujah no matter what it is that you see no matter how it is that you feel trust and stand on his word for he is the solid rock the rock of our foundation we was just listening to i'm determined by the gospel artist nutricia glory 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 be unto god in this place oh my lord we want to welcome you in the church 
on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you determined to trust them? For we are determined to trust them with all our might, with all our minds, with all our souls, with all our beings. We're determined to trust them because we know that we cannot do it without him. Amen. In the majestic name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for meeting us in the church on tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, we're going to have another dynamic episode on tonight um, in the church. Amen. Glory to God. So we do want to welcome, welcome, welcome each and every last one of you back in the church with us on tonight. I am your host, Apostle Deranche Zorn with Divine Order Restoration Ministries International where we are restoring the order of God, one life, one body, one nation at a time. And I'm always excited when we're in the church together. Amen. I'm glory to God. I'm just always excited to, to be with you guys every Monday uh, to just hear what the Spirit of the Lord is going to do as we come in the church to discuss and resolve real everyday issues that are taking place around the world exposing the good the bad and the ugly amen as we just engage in very powerful conversations amen in the truth of god's word he said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free amen in the majestic name of jesus or i hope that you're excited as i am to be in the church on tonight as we're getting ready to uh, dive in tonight um i'm glory to god in in a very powerful conversation something that is must must much much needed something amen that must be addressed amen in the church on tonight and i I just thank god for the opportunity tonight we're going to be dealing with lying in the church we are definitely still in our guard your mouth series and so on tonight we're going to focus on lying Amen. We're going to focus on our topic, lying, lying in the church. So this is what I want you to do for me. Go ahead and share this platform on your social media platforms. Go ahead and share the broadcast on your social media platforms. For those who are out there listening to us on um, tonight, so that those that you know can be informed, amen, on what the word of God says about lying. What is God speaking? How does God speak? How does God feel about lies? And I think that it's a very honest topic that we need to um, talk about tonight. Because we want to get into the truth of God's word. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. So before we dive into this topic on tonight, I do want us to just go to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that God will govern us today in this conversation. So that everything that is spoken on tonight, that it would definitely be from his throne of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, Father God, we just bless you in this place as we welcome you in the church with us on tonight we ask oh heavenly father that you will come into this place and you will saturate this atmosphere oh god that you will saturate the networks and the airway systems oh gracious king through whatever platform that your people are listening to oh god let your glory fill this place let your glory fill wherever they may be around the world throughout the nations oh gracious god let there be oh god such an aroma of your presence that your people oh god may be healed set free and delivered that your people oh god hallelujah may receive strength on tonight that demonic strongholds and demonic influences oh god are just torn down and broken and demolished from their very lives chains are broken oh gracious god as you rest upon us on tonight and give us oh god your oh, shut out, I see, your unadulterated word 
of truth. Oh, Father, guard our minds on tonight. Guard our tongues on tonight. Guard our hearts oh, on tonight, oh God. That nothing, oh God, will come upon it, oh God, but your word of truth. That in which you are speaking directly from your throne of grace. Overshadow us on tonight with your Holy Spirit. Reign, rule, and abide, O Lord God. Send forth words, O God, of healing, words of deliverance, words of breakthrough, words of transformation, O God. Words, O God, that renew minds and transform thoughts, O God, into the very thoughts of you. O shout out, I see, into your very thoughts, O God, in the majestic name of Jesus. Let words of healing, O God, of the heart, of the, of the mind, of the body, of the soul, begin, O God, to be released unthrough, O God, un- un- through the line through the broadcaster, through the radio airways, oh God, and network systems in the majestic name of Jesus so that your people can be healed. And so that, oh God, they may grow and that we all may grow by your spirit and by your might and surely by your power that it will be nothing hindering us from moving in your glory, Lord. Have your holy way in this place. Go, wo, 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 shadada, saba, ba, saba, kororo, siya. Hallelujah. Visit your people in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your listeners. Hallelujah. On tonight, as they come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west, we thank you. For every listener from Africa and Australia on tonight, every listener in London, in the UK, oh God, every listener, oh God, that's in South America and in North America, every listener, oh God, that is in Antarctica. Father God, we bless your name in this place. Yeah, we thank you for Asia. We thank you for Brazil. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For every listener under the sound of our voice on tonight. And even, oh God, for those, oh God, who would have the opportunity to come and listen again to your very word. Send forth, oh God, divine revelations and strategies. So that we may know the truth and we may be set free. So that we can begin to walk in your ways and walk in your likeness. So that we may represent you, O God, in your fullest form, O gracious King. That even what we come out of our mouths with, that it will be pleasable and acceptable in your sight. As we speak truthfully and honestly. To oh, shout out, I see ya, to one another, Lord, allowing, oh God, your word, your word, oh God, to be established in our very lives. In the majestic name of Jesus, oh gracious Lord, just have your way in this place. That we able shout out Asia. May walk in the boldness of your truth. Lacking nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lacking absolutely nothing, oh God. That we may move so graciously. Hallelujah. That Father. That we will be able to uphold one another. In the majestic name of Jesus, have your way. 
We tear down every lying spirit, oh God. Every the spirit of deception, we destroy it and demolish it right now in the majestic name of Jesus. We dismantle every prison of deception, every prison of lies, oh God, that has encamped your children from walking in the freedom of your word, from walking in the truth of your power, oh shadow that that has hindered them, oh God, from fulfilling their purpose, obtaining your promise in the majestic name of Jesus. Oh, we demolish and we dismantle every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We cancel every contract that of deception that is placed upon your children. And we send it back until his camp stamp insufficient with the blood. Hey, Boshara Dasia. With the blood of Jesus. Sealing it. Oh, gracious God. Letting the noble God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, that oh God, that yeah, that the plan is void, Hallelujah, oh because Jesus did it all on the cross, that it was finished. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that he rose so that we can be broken free from the lies and deception of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in this place, oh God. In the majestic name of Jesus, have your way in the church on tonight. We speak truth over your people's lives, oh God. We cover them with the blood of Jesus, oh God. We speak truth within their spirit, within their minds. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. To God be the absolute glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Again, welcome to um, the In the Church TV and Radio broadcast. I am your host, Apostle Deron Shay Zorn. And know that in the church, we are shining the light on on it all what is that light the word of god uh, on tonight we are shining the light of god's word amen on lying amen uh, having a lying tongue a deceitful tongue uh, uh, having a lying mouth uh, amen in the church who is the church you and i hallelujah thank you jesus as we are not our own we are the temple of god we are that place where god dwells amen in the name of jesus the church building Lies don't start taking place in the church building until, uh, hallelujah, the people of God, who is the church, until the church come into that assembly. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's talk about it tonight. See, lying, deceitful, de- deceitfulness, untruthful is very common. And almost everybody does it for one reason or another in some form shape or fashion and many think that it's it's okay to tell a lie you know it's like i'm just telling a little white lie that's okay but the truth of the matter of a thing is that if it's not okay with god then it can't be okay with us the word tells us that we have to hate the things that God hates and we have to love the things that God loves. So tonight we want to expose what the truth is. As we are in this guard my mouth series. As God has us in a place where he desire for us to speak in the same way that him and Jesus speak. As we're made in, 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 in their image and in their likeness. And so we're shining the light on lying. So that we can dismantle any myths, any untruths that we may have, that we may be telling ourselves. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So that we can get it right with God. 
And we can line up with this word of truth, line by line, precept by precept. And so I'm just so excited, you know, about our topic on tonight. So we're going to start here in the text because we want to know what is God? What does God, how does God view lying? And as he views it, then how can we set ourselves in a place? Where we line up with his views. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So let's 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 talk about it tonight. I'm excited about our topic. So we're gonna start here. I wanna set set the tone for tonight's conversation as we discover what it is that God says, what what's in God's word. Remember, this is not uh, Apostle Deronche's word. This is God's truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to start here in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter um, 25. Amen. I want us to, to get started here because I want us this to be our foundational scripture for tonight. And the word of God says, therefore, putting away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. This word here, this one text, it it, it talks about so many different things. It, It breaks down so many different things for the life of a believer. And we're going to get ready to, we're going to talk about um, some of this, these things and, and break down some of this truth. Break down this truth in the, in the text of, in the word of God. So let's go here and let us define. Well, let's define lying because we want to make sure that we just build. Amen. We, we build the case. Amen. Um, word to God. Um, thank you, Jesus, that we build the case. Um, hallelujah, as it is written. Amen. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, let's go here. Hallelujah. Lying. Lying means falsehood, deceit, counterfeit, distortion, fabrication uh, of, 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 a word or of a story Um, it is to speak falsely or to utterly or utterly untruth knowingly to speak to someone falsely or to utter untruthful information knowingly to someone else with the intent to deceive someone So speaking, telling a fabricated story, a distorted story, um, a um, a counterfeit story, um, a a, a deceitful, a a story that is a falsehood, a story that is misleading to someone else with the intent of deceiving them. Amen. Amen. A, a lie. A lie is a misrepresentation of the truth. A lie misrepresents the truth. It, it camouflages and it hides the truth. And, and, and one thing about lying that we know that a lying keeps one in bondage. When one do not have information, do not do not have the truth. It causes individuals to perish. It's called individuals to die. It causes individuals to be put in bondage. It 
it misleads and it hurt and it destroys relationships because even when a lie is found out to be a lie then it begin to bring up walls of hostility or bring up barriers of 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 lack of trust why because you know not only that it bring up the walls of lack of trust, but you also got to understand that when you are telling a lie to someone, you're misrepresenting the truth. You're causing that person who is receiving the information, you're causing them to react or act upon something that is not the truth. And so they're acting or living a lie because you misrepresented the truth when you told them whatever it was that you told them. Lying is very serious and it can be very, very dangerous. Dangerous and damaging, very damaging. Lying has destroyed so many homes, businesses, ministries. But only if the truth would have been told, then relationships would have not been destroyed. So, I want to walk through the text, amen, and let's just look at some accounts of how what some things that lying caused in the text amen just want to look at this here um so that we can get a a good understanding now of course we want to go and we want to discover where was the first excuse me where was the first um lie told and who was it told by? The very first lie that is discovered in the word of truth. Um, it came from the author of lies. It came from the author of lies in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, um, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 4. When when the serpent was talking to Eve see Eve was deceived see the serpent spoke to her falsely in the intent to deceive her to get her to do to get her to disobey God and when she heard the lie That he spoke to her. And it, it, it altered her pattern of thinking. It, it altered her, 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 her way of responding. It, it, it altered her behavior. Why did it alter her behavior? Because um, as many times as Eve had went past this tree, as many times as Eve had been in the presence of this of this tree. It never looked it pleasing to her eye. It, 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 it never appeared to her that it was good for food. She, she didn't have an appetite for what was on that tree. But through the through the deceptive words that she that entered into her ear gates in her conversation with the serpent, it changed her way of acting. It changed her be- behavior. It, it it altered her normal practices of things. And so when he misled her, a 
And he told her, "You will not surely die." And he went on to and went on to you know that he started there. You will not surely die. And then he went on with some more other fabricating words. And said, for, for God know that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And then all of a sudden, her chemicals, her, all of a sudden, that same tree that she been seeing, the same tree she been walking past, the, you know, the same tree she never noticed it or looked at it in the manner in which she began to look at it. It's starting in verse six. And so when she began to look at it from that manner and in that standpoint, when it became pleasing to her eyes when she looked at it and she saw that uh that the tree was good for food and it became pleasing to her eye and and it became desirable to her and she wanted that wisdom that he was deceiving her about she took it she 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 took the fruit from it and and she had it and and she gave it to her husband and then one word of deception went to another word of deception and it just continued to move forward but that was the first account and because of that deceptive interaction right there it caused them to be kicked out of the garden it calls for curse to fall upon man and fall upon woman and even fall upon the serpent. Put us in a place that that's why Jesus had to come. Amen. To save us. Amen. For what happened in the garden. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to come and, and, and be the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate atonement um, for our sins. Amen. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Because of deception. Hallelujah. Caused every child to be born of a woman to be wrapped in iniquity. Habodoshaya. And he had to come to, hallelujah, to redeem us from that empty life that we had inherited. Amen. From our ancestors, from glory to God. So I thank God for the blood. I thank God that the, the, the lamb that was slain on Calvary, amen, that he went to the cross and he died, amen. And yes, he rose. Hey, thank you, Jesus, for you and I, amen, in the majestic name. So that was the first one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go here to this account. Um, by one of our very, very um, favorite individuals that we talk about a lot, um, who I I absolutely adore. I I absolutely adore um, this dynamic um, man of God in in, in this word of truth. Um, I I, I love um, how he just matured in God's word. I want to deal with the father of faith. Amen. Um, for a moment, and I want to deal with how he, um, how he handled, or how he dealt with, you know, a situation. Amen. And I want to look at what took place. How did it affect? Amen. How how did it affect him? How did it affect, um, Sarah? Amen. So I want to look at Abram and and, and, and Sarah. And I want to, us to go over to Genesis chapter 12. Um, chapter 12 starting at about um, verse 10. Starting at verse 10. Amen. Um, so here, let me give you a little background information. Here we got Abram. That God had told him to leave his family, get out of his get out of his country 
leave his country, leave his family, leave his father's house, and go to a place where he's going to show him. And that he was going to make him a great nation, and he was going to bless him. Amen. And he was going to make his name great. <sighs> Glory to God. And, 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 that, and he was going to be a blessing to other people. Amen. And so here he finds himself, he'd leave, and he'd do exactly what God said. And he find himself in a place as he's, you know, God sent him down to Canaan. Amen. He went down to go to Canaan. And it just so happened this, this place during this time, you know, they was down there. A drought came. Right. So when the drought came, a famine came. So when the famine came in the land. Abram decided they will go down to Egypt. And so he did. So as he was approaching Egypt, he looks at Sarah and he tells Sarah, look, I want you to say that you are my sister. Because if you and if you tell them that you're my wife, they're going to kill me. And so he said, tell them you're my sister so that they won't kill me so that I can live. And so when they got down to Egypt, just, you know, just as he said, of course, when they saw her. And, you know, when they saw her and he told them, hey, that's, that's my sister. She said that, that that's, that's my brother. You know, Pharaoh took her in because she was very beautiful. And so, you know, Pharaoh said, hey, you know, they snatching up everything. And so he wanted to take her in as his very own. And even with, it was just so many different deceptions. Because guess what? Pharaoh took care of Abram. For that very fact. Because he was allegedly the brother of Sarah. Sarah is what she's here now. But... I mean, he he gave him sheep and oxen and, and 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 servants and camels and you know and donkeys. You know, he gave he took care of him. But guess what? Because of this lie, Abram put Pharaoh and his whole household in danger. Um. There he put Pharaoh and his whole household in danger. I mean, his Sarah was already in a dangerous position. And I'm sure in a very uncomfortable position. Because now she's having to pretend that her husband is her brother. And in, in the same token, you know, being taken into Pharaoh's, um, into Pharaoh's um, home or kingdom castle. As to potentially be his. For him to take as his one of his wives or concubines. And so Abram took financial, you know, contributions from Pharaoh under this deceit. He wound up causing a plague to go in Pharaoh's household. I don't know what was going on. Because they don't mention it here psychologically with Sarah. Um, with all of this going on in the process. Because, you know, Abram wanted to spare his life. And so he lied about who she were. And so now Pharaoh and his whole household, they end up with a plague. God put a plague on the whole entire household according to the word of the Lord. Due to the near fact. Because Sarah was Abram's wife. And Pharaoh, God revealed things to Pharaoh. And he had to call Abraham like, wait a minute. 
you about to cause me to sin against God because you lied. See, um, Pharaoh took her in based on the, the deception and the lie that they spoke. So it caused him to act. It, it caused him to act in, 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 um, according to that lie, but that, that put him in a great danger in his household. And he had to tell him, look, what did, why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? Why did you tell me she was your sister? This is Pharaoh talking to him like, what have you done to me? He said, I might have taken her as my wife. He said, look, what have you done? So look, I, we can't, I can't take it. That is, that is unlawful for me to take another man's wife. And he said, look, here is your wife. Take her and go away. And he sent them away. So now they get embarrassed and all other type of stuff, you know, on all type of levels. And then they get put out the land. They get put out from a place where there was no famine. Because they lied. So do you see how dangerous that situation was? All of because Abraham decided he wanted to lie instead of saying the truth. Because God had already given him the promise that, look, he told him, look, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families on the earth shall be blessed. So he had to just know this was not a place I was going to die. Because God has great promise for me. But fear came. And, 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 and fear showed up. And so he found himself in a place. Where he was afraid. And because he was afraid. He lied. Fear often. Caused us to lie. But even with that lie. Due to that fear. Think about the impact that that lie could have on all parties that's involved. Amen. On all parties that's involved. You know, we're going to take a break right here in the church as we're definitely dealing, um, shining the light on lying in the church, exposing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. Amen. As we go through this word to see and hear what it is that God is speaking. Amen. What it is that he's saying. As we shall hate that which God hates. And love that which God loves. Amen. In the majestic name of Jesus. We're going to take a break right here in the church. As we go on break. Go ahead and share this broadcast on your social media platforms so that others that you know can get in on this conversation go ahead and send us a chat over go ahead and send us a message over through chat hallelujah thank you jesus Uh, and and join into the conversation if you like um for those that are on a facebook and on um spreaker or on the in the church.com website we can definitely get your information instantly and we'll go into the dialogue we'll dialogue about that in which you send over right here in the church amen in the majestic name of jesus we will be right back in the church in jesus name amen amen and amen to god be the glory thank you jesus hallelujah proverbs 10 verse 22 says the blessings of the lord it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it lord every moment with you is a blessing and we just want to express our gratitude with this song
for blessing us in the name of Jesus thank you thank you hallelujah for laying down your life in the name of Jesus oh how we bless your name in this place in the majestic name of Jesus Glory, glory, glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Almighty, O holy, O matchless King, in the majestic name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Oh, how we praise you in this place. We want to welcome you back to the end of church TV and ready your broadcast. Amen, where we are shining the light of God's word in the church on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. Hallelujah. On tonight, we're shining the light of God's word um, in the church. We're dealing with Amen, the Guarding Our Mouth series. And so on tonight as we're dealing with the guard our mouth series we're shining the light of God's word on lying in the church amen we're dealing with our lying tongues on tonight and we bless God in this place I do want to thank you so much for sharing this broadcast on your social media platforms Africa, I want to thank you um, for joining us tonight in the church. Hallelujah. South America, thank you um, for being in the church with us on tonight. Europe, you are awesome. Thank you so much for being with us. Australia, thank you. Hallelujah for joining us in the church on tonight. Canada is in the house. We bless your name. Glory be unto God. We thank God. Um, for you on tonight um, in the name of Jesus glory to God we bless God hallelujah thank you Jesus for Asia UK amen you guys are amazing you're awesome hallelujah thank you Jesus 
We thank God for each and every last one of you in the church on tonight. Glory, glory, glory to God. Continue to spread the word. Continue to get the word out. Go ahead and share it in your Facebook groups. Go ahead and tweet it. Go ahead and put it on your Instagram and send them the link. Amen. To the inthechurch.com website. So they can get in on this dynamic conversation. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, glory to God. Also, share it with your business partners. Share it with your ministry friends. Share it, amen, with those who you are in a relationship with so that we can understand on tonight as we're in the church um amen glory to god the impact the infection in which a lying tongue will do how it will come forth and it will kill and destroy meaningful relationships and that it will hinder us from moving in our purpose and our callings in our destinies because our purpose amen it is contingent upon one another upon those relationships and those people that god has called forth in our lives to help us amen to help us come together amen and do the work glory to god and and that thing got to be based on truth our relationships the foundation have to be based on truth amen so that we can work in unity so that we can work on one accord Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have to deceive to, to get it, if you have to deceive to, to, to build it, oh, shut up, I see. If any deception is upon it, it ain't going to last. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It will not last. Hey, my God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. You know, that's why I, the markets crashed um, years ago. Because there was so much deception going forth. How about Osaya with these homes and, and all this other stuff that was manipulating this and manipulating that. And it caused the whole market to crash. My God. And it affected many lives. Even lives who didn't even have anything to do with the lies and the deception. How about shut out Osaya. But it affected so many people. It caused the whole market of the United States of America to crash. And then it affected markets around the globe of those who do business with us. Amen. And we're still trying to recover. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So let's talk about it. We're talking about lying in the church on tonight. Ooh, we just got through finished talking about in our last um, our, our last segment. You know, we was talking about, we was looking at, um, we looked at um, the first lie that ever took place, which was in um, Genesis chapter 3, um, verse 4, when Satan was talking to, or the serpent, the book would say serpent back then, but the serpent was talking to Eve. Then we went on over a little bit farther over into the book of Genesis. And we begin to um, look at Sarah and Abraham. We begin to look at the father of faith um, and and Sarah in in chapter Genesis chapter twelve, and how that whole thing there um, with the lies and deception, how um, how it impacted um, a situation, right? How it brought forth um, danger, amen, in in the lives of Pharaoh and his household because of of the lies um, that was spoken. So. Um, let's, let's, let's go back over here in the text. I just want to deal with some other things in the text because there's so many different things, um, that we can talk about. So let's deal with this. Let's talk about, do you know what lying is? We've seen how it, um, how it can affect some things. Then, so let us look at forms of lying. Amen. I think that's important to know. Um, so some forms of lines that we can look at on tonight um, is this. Um, we can look at, um, we know lying contradicts truth, right? Lying, uh, it contradicts truth. It is the opposite of what truth is. You know, just like in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, that we was talking about. We said that, I mean, he told um Eve, he said, you will not surely die, which was a total contradiction of what God had spoken, amen, um, unto Adam, the command he had given unto Adam. We also know when you look at another form of lying, it's when you are bearing false witness, when you are saying something that you know that is not true about somebody else. 
whether it's information that was passed down to you and that you're just unsure of and you're just assuming it to be the truth and you're repeating it because somebody else said it or if it's just something that you are intentionally saying about somebody else um exodus twenty sixteen. this is a command from the lord this is a part of the commandments right he said you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor should not bear false witness against your neighbor that is a command of us and our neighbor is anyone that god put before us amen in the name of jesus also another form of lying amen uh, another form of lying is the denial of truth a denial of truth is another form of lying now um we know um it's in the book of matthew when peter when peter denied christ right uh when peter denied christ when he was asked you know um was he with the Christ? He, then he was told that you was the one that was with Jesus. And he denied him three times. Peter was just lying, right? He he was just lying. God, the Christ knew he was going to lie before the Christ had already revealed unto him. Look, Peter, you're going to lie. You, you're going you gonna, to you gonna lie. Um, you're going to deny me three times. And so when it happened in the book of uh, Matthew um, chapter 26, it came to his remembrance. So deny, denial of the truth is still a form of lying. Amen. Um, the practices, practicing deception. Practicing deception is also a form of of lying and so we have to make sure that we don't practice deception or we don't, we don't practice lying so you know one of the things that that I'm thinking about here when it comes to when when practicing deceitful you know or what have you um it made me think about um david's son absalom i think that's his name absalom you know he 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 just like he lied to his father to get his brothers to come to um to this party that he was throwing and you know he just kept and he kept insisting you know for them to come because his intention was to bring him Lorne there so that he can lure Amnon there so that he can kill him. And so that was that that was something that he practiced. Amen. Um that that he just conquered up in his mind and he just went forth with it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, not practicing the truth. Not practicing the truth is a form of lying. John tells us, 1 John 1 and 6 tells us, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And do not practice the truth. And we're going to talk about this truth, because this truth is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so we can, we got to practice truth. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Another form of lying. Oh, and it tells us it's in the word. It talks about us professing to love God, but hating our brothers. You know, how can we say that we love God and we hate our brothers? The text just flat out say we lie. It say he's a liar. It just flat out say that. And so we, we need to just start beginning to think about those things. We, we really need to begin 
Um, another um, form of lying, claiming to be something that we're not. Claiming to be something that we're not. On Revelation 3, it said, chapter 3, verse 9. He said, indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Hmm. My God, indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. My God. Claiming to be something. He said, look, they say they're Jews, but they're not. You know, you're claiming to be something that you're not. Amen. That's why we got to be authentic. We got to be true to thyself. Be true to thyself. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for those that, that follow me in my business endeavors. Amen. I I, I, I taught a whole training on being by tr- true to thyself. Amen. On the DeRonchezorn.com site. Um, for those that are that, Amen. I, I I spoke it from a business standpoint, but even just just who we are, life. When we be true to ourselves and be authentic, Amen. Um, to who it is that God has called forth in our lives, life is so much more easier. It's hard pretending. <laughs> it is it is hard pretending. So uh, we just it's hard uh, to pretend. So that's why we just have to be who we are. Be who you are. Amen. I'm glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So just want to point those out because they just in case we don't know what line looks like and you know or what have you. So just wanted to, to throw that out there um, at us as well. Now, where does lying come from? Now, if God is the truth, we know it don't come from Him. You know, because the text tells us, look, He can't lie, God. Mm-mm. The text tells us that God cannot lie. And so because he cannot lie, then we got to figure out where does this, where does it come from? It said, look, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. So we call Satan, we call him the father of lies, just point blank um you know um is look n- nothing else to it nothing else you know um a- attached to it that's just who he is we just talked about him when he over there in the book of genesis you know we we just talked about him just talked about him over there also in um because I want to make sure I always point you to the truth of God's word. Um, John eight forty four. This is Jesus talking to the, to the Jews, and he says to them in John chapter eight, starting at verse forty four, "You are of your father the devil, and the and the desires of your father you want to do." He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm -hmm. My Lord. So he speaks from his own resources. And see, we got to be a people don't speak from our own resources. We speak from the resources of God. If we speak from the resources of God, and if we speaking from the resources of God, we're speaking from the truth. We're speaking on that which is solid, that which is truth, that which will be that which will be proven to not be an error. Because the truth can be tested, tried, and purified. It can go through the fire. And it's still going to stand. Why? Because it's the truth. That's the only thing that's going to withstand anything is the truth. It's the truth. That's that's why it is important. I mean, even when we do things that are wrong, that we come forth 
in the truth is 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 vital it's very 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 vital that we speak the truth and we get it you know we get it out amen so that other people um won't be hurt other people won't get brought instead of confusion other people amen that 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 we will not amen impact the lives of other people we won't destroy and demolish because that is what lying does it brings forth division it brings forth division so lying is from the enemy lying amen it comes from a heart it comes from the deceitfulness of the heart of mankind here in the book of mark um chapter 7 it says for from within out of the heart of man proceeded evil thoughts adultery fornication murder thief covetousness wickedness deceit um lewdness and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within a and defile a man jeremiah tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it proverbs said deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil but counsel of peace have joy that was proverbs 12 and 20 So that's why we got to allow God. I, you know, I believe David's like God created me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. Amen. We got to get these hearts clean. Amen. Because it said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the most So the mouth can speak lies because if the lies flows up out of the river of the heart. And that's why we got to get these hearts clean. We got to allow God to come and expose everything that's there. Allow him to uproot every evil, wicked thing that is inside of our heart. But we, we, we got to do those things. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we want to be established, amen, in the things of God. We want to be established in righteousness. We want to be established in the truth of God's word. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And we want to make sure that it is so. Amen. That it is so. Amen. In the majestic name of Jesus. And so that those are our characteristics. That's where, you know, amen, the lies and deception, you know, come from. Um, glory to God. Um, thank you, Jesus. And and I definitely have to, I'm gonna go ahead and, and read this um particular text because we cannot get away without um saying this, amen. And then I want to begin to deal with some other things in our next set segment when it comes to lying but then i want to tell us how we can keep our tongues from lying amen how we can change that behavior hallelujah thank you jesus i'm going to god so i just want to read um proverbs here i want to read a little bit of proverbs six amen i mean and, and if this is not black and white for you what I'm getting ready to read over in the book of Proverbs. Um, I'm going to tell you this. And I'm just going to say it so plainly. You're in denial. You're, you're, you're in denial. If if you don't believe that lying. Once I, especially when I read this particular text. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. You're in a place of denial and the enemy is deceiving you and it will cause you to walk in a place of falsehood that will keep you in a place of deception, keep you in bondage. 
from being free in the Lord. It's just no way to clean it up. No way to make it, oh, shut up, I see No way to try to make it even look good. So I'm going to start at verse 12, and then I'm going to walk my way down, amen, so that you can hear the Spirit of the Lord and what it is that God is saying when it comes to lying. How do he feel about lying? Here we go in the Word. Proverbs 6, chapter 6, verse 12. And the Word of the Lord reads, A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil. My Lord. He devises evil. Continuously. He devises evil. Continuously. He sows discord. Therefore, his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. Verse 16. This is where I really want us to focus in on here. This is what I really want us to focus in on right here. Um, Proverbs 6, chapter 6, verse um, 16 These six things the Lord hates Yes Seven Are an abomination To him The Lord hates a proud look A lying Tongue Hands that shed innocent blood A heart that devised wicked plans Feet that are swift in running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. And one who soars discord among the brethren. My Lord. We're going to take a break right here. We're going to take a break right there. And we're going to come back. And we're going to start our next segment off. Right here in the book of Proverbs. I'm telling you, go ahead and get this information. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms so that those that you know can get in on this powerful conversation. So that they can be they can be um so they can be mature in, in the truth of God's word. So that they may be free. Amen. So that even one can go back and begin to build relationships right. Go back and get things in order so relationships will not be torn down so that ministries and businesses and family structures will not be broken up due to a lying tongue. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We're going to be right back in the church. You are listening to Apostle Deron Shazorn on the In the Church TV and radio broadcast where we are shining the light on it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Dealing with real issues, real matters that are taking a place around the world so that God's people will know the truth and that the truth will set them free. Amen. In the majestic name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be unto God in this place in jesus name amen amen and amen Yeah. 
that place of worship. Oh, how we bless the name of the true living God in the church on tonight. Where, amen, hallelujah, that we just always putting ourselves in that place of worship. Amen. To magnify him, to glorify him, to lift him up on high, the place of worship. Amen. As he desire our worship. And those that worship him can only worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Only in spirit and in truth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, glory to God. Welcome back to the In the Church TV and Radio Broadcast. Where we are shining the light um, on it all. On the good, the bad, and the ugly. Exposing, um, hallelujah, it all with the word of God. Lining it up line by line and precept by precept. So that we will know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As we deal with real issues, real matters. That is taking a place around the world throughout the nations glory to god teaching and training in the truth of god's word hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. As we left off on to, uh, in our last segment, we was dealing with um, Proverbs chapter um, 6, and we was talking about the six things that God hate. And those things was a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deceived wicked plans, fleet that are feet that are swift into running to evil, a false witness who speak lies, and one who sow discord among the brethren amen glory to god thank you jesus and so many of those things deal with that whole word deception my god oh my god in the name of jesus hallelujah so let's let's look at this uh word of, of truth you know over in the book of first king um chapter 21 we have naboth uh, was a very very innocent man who refused to sell his vineyard to king ahab right and because of this we will find him in a place where every last one of these horrible sins every last one of these things that god hate was brought upon him was brought upon him he lost his life i mean all six of these accounts took place and he lost his life. And God dealt with those, amen, accordingly. To those who unjustly took this innocent man's life. As arrogance showed up. Because, you know, King Ahab, he just wanted it. He was just, you know, he, he had already had much. But he just had to have this land. He had to have this land and and, and, and um his his wife Jezebel She began to plot when he told her what was going on. She plotted. In a plot she lied. And then she had men to bear false witness against him. To say about shout out Isaiah. Had my God had men to say that he was blaspheming God. That he had blasphemed God and the king. And because of this false witnessing. He was stoned to death. Those who was given the plot. They ran and they did it. And they sent it out. They carried it out to the T. And this man lost his life. Innocent blood was shed. And then they stoned him to death. Because of the lying. The false witnesses. Oh, Lord, my God. And so God dealt with them. God dealt with them, even sent the prophet to speak about how God was going to deal, how the dogs was going to eat whoever belonged to Ahab. And dies in the city and said that the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. 
and that even his wife who plotted up everything, that she would die. The dogs would eat her by the wall. Because God was dealing with them appropriately. Because they did something very evil and very wicked. Before the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I just wanted to point that out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Um, hallelujah. Um, we're going to shift. Amen. Um, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Um, in, in, in this word of truth. In, in this word of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and God, God hates, I, I believe that, you know, that God just, God hates lying. Why? Because it is contrary. It contradicts who he is. It contradicts who we are. And so God wants to make sure that we line up a man with this word and deception doesn't afford us the opportunity to line up with the word of truth amen and you know as as we're dealing with um the lies amen or, or lying see and lying in a in a business deal you know it can cost money it could cause, you know, uh, terrible losses. Oh, uh, hallelujah. Thank you. I wish I could remember the name of the company. I can't think of the name of the company right now. I think it was Enron. Well, they was doing all those lines, all those lines. People lost their whole life savings. People lost what they thought they was going to be able to take and retire on and live forever. People lost millions of dollars their whole livelihood. Because people was doing very deceitful business transactions. And there's so many, so many um, business transactions or businesses that are folding under or that have folded under. Because people, there was lies going on in the business deals. And we lie in this word of truth. When we have false prophets and false apostles and teachers and preachers and evangelists going forth in the world, in the world, it it costs people the hope of eternal life. It it, it costs bring people in a place of hopelessness because of the lies that are being told unto them. Just as if we lie to somebody about loving them. We cause them to build up emotions or, you know, build up their lives on something that's a lie. That that could lead to destruction, that leads to destruction. When the truth begins to unfold. And so we got to be a people that don't mislead others we got to be a people that don't destroy relationships because through the, because of lying because lying builds put a build up a relationship on the wrong foundation it builds it up on a on a on a foundation um such as the sand building the house on the sand when it talks about that in the word that look when the water wash up, when the truth begin to come out, that relationship begin to crumble. It begin to fall. People can't begin to when and when things like that begin to happen because it destroys confidence and trust and and assurance and things of that nature. It just literally tear down, tear down and destroy relationships so let's let's talk about it because we we gotta position ourselves in places amen if if that if we're a person that lies that line is upon our lips we gotta begin to pray 
and ask God for deliverance. Right? The psalmist says, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Just as someone deliver me, God. He said, Look, I need to be delivered from this thing. Why? Because it is destroying everything I have, even the things that I want, even the things that I desire. Because I'm lying, it's keeping me from being able to, even if I obtain it, it's keeping me from being able to maintain it and sustain it. And so it's a problem. It should be a problem. Because it, it, it causes everything that you speak a lot in to be destroyed. We have to remove falsehood. Away from us. And so that's what we got to we got to pray unto the Lord. Lord, create me a clean heart. Renewing me a right spirit. I need this heart to be clean so that I won't be lying out of uh, from my lips, from the fruit of my lips. So that when I speak, I speak of nothing but truth. And you got to begin, or we have to begin to position ourselves and determine, you know what, I am going to speak the truth. No matter what. No matter what, I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak the truth. It makes the determinant, look, I ain't going to speak no lies and ain't no deceit, and it's going to be on my tongue. Why? Because I reverence the Lord. I want to walk in his image and in his likeness. Amen. That's another reason why we have to study this word. So that we'll know what the truth is. We got to know the truth to speak the truth. And that's also where the relationship with God come in at as well. He said you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to set you free. The only way you're going to know the truth. Amen. It's through relationship. The relationship, amen, with the truth, with the relationship with God. And as you build that relationship with God, guess what? You're going you're gonna to find yourself where you're, gonna, you're just begin to stop lying. You'll find yourself where you'll begin to just speak the truth. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It will put you in that state. Why? Because you love God. It'll place you there because you love God, and you want to, and, and you want to make sure that you're doing right by God. You want to make sure that you're doing right by God. You want to make sure. I mean, look, I, Lord, I just want to please you. Lord, I just want to please you. And also, amen, as as we pray and we ask, amen, we, we surely will receive. As we come into intimate places and spaces with God. But whatever those things is that's causing us to lie, because that's something else we have to identify. What is that that caused me to lie? Am I doing, do I lie to to, to cause harm or hurt or to cover up something to hide something to get what it is I want to to do you know do I do I lie to to amen because I have a fear of rejection or of I want to please people why do I lie because th- that right there got to be dealt with and what ca- what causes you to lie because even in our prayer and that's God to expose things amen expose those things that even prompt us to disobey him because we got to deal with those root issues because people just don't lie just because they just want to lie 
it's some things that are it's some things that are causing one to to speak those lies and so when we want to be delivered from something we really got to be delivered from we got to get those things identified and we got to get those things identified quickly so that we can be healed and set free from those things because that, that's, that's, that's important That, that's that's very, very important because we want to live and not die. Amen. In in the name of Jesus. So we, we got to, got to, got to get in, get in this world of truth. We got to teach the word of truth. We got to speak the word of truth. We got to live this word of truth. And and it, it comes through, again, I, I can't say enough, it comes through relationship building. We, we got to build without um, building a relationship with the Lord. It it, it 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 hurts and it damage our capacity to walk in the truth of God's word. Come into a relationship with God and in intimacy and in intimate places with God. The word empowers us. Even as we're studying the word of God, we're praying before God, we're meditating before God, and allowing God to minister to us. His word of truth, is its word of truth washes us. It washes those things from within us. Amen. So that we can be presented faultless, without a blemish. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No wrinkles. Amen. Be able to be presented before God as the righteousness of Christ. As the righteousness of Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so those things have to be purged out so that we can begin to walk in places and spaces where we're moving and operating in unity. Where we can come, amen, as one, as one. Where we can come together as one and remain in a place of unity. So we started off tonight um, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, amen. And we dealt with verse 25. And, you know, that, that verse, you know, it, it gives above that, amen, it is so many other things that it talked about because this particular chapter talks out, start off with walking in unity, being in a place of oneness, being in a place of whole together, synchronized. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is that when we're truthful to one another, when we're truthful in our talk and our speech and our, and our behavior and language and things of that nature as we interact with one another that's vital why because it's going to keep the unity it's going to keep peace so that we can walk together we're told to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace and the truth has to be told in order for that to manifest. We need one another in we need one another to grow and mature in the body of Christ. It said, look, he left these gifts. He left the gifts 
Why? He said, look, I gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of God. So that we would no longer be tossed to and fro and carried away by every wind of doctrine. Carried away by the lies. So we will not be carried away by the lies. By the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love. May grow up in all things in him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joint and knitted together by what every joint supplies, by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Every part does its share. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love, my Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. He says, speaking truth in love. You know, even when we have to come into these places, amen, we have to come in places and in spaces, you know, we say, look, this, we know this word is used to rebuke, to correct, to give instructions, amen, to reprove. We, we know that. And so even when we have to come together and we have to deal, amen, he said, look, deal with each other in truth. The, the word of God is, is laid out the way it is so that we can be strengthened in this walk, amen, so that we can, we can, amen, so that we can defeat the schemes and the plots of the enemy so that we may overcome our adversaries in the name of Jesus and so if lies and deception is in the midst it's going to it hurts the effectiveness of of, of one being strengthened why because there's no trust there there's division there Where there's division, unity cannot abide. Right? It said a house divided uh, um, among itself cannot stand. And lies and deception will cause a house to be divided. We are all important in the building of this kingdom. It said every supporting ligament. Whatever he's called for for you to do, you are one of those uh, uh, one of those components. And so if we're going to grow and mature to that place, the unity have to come forth. We got to strip down, strip away from the lies and deception. We got to buy the truth and do not sell it, gaining wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We got to stop buying the lies. We got to stop buying into the deception. If it is not the truth, if it doesn't measure up the truth, we need to leave it where it is. Why? Because it's hurting. The body is causing us to be in effective in all in which we are called to do
in in all that we're called to do. And so we need this truth. The the and, and in this truth, that's why we gotta learn it because also guess what? It said the truth sanctifies. He said in John seventeen, he said, Sanctify them when Christ was praying for us. He said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. It is truth. And it's the truth of God's word that sanctifies us, cleanses us, purges, amen, from our sinful nature. Corrects our sinful nature. And gives us the understanding, give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge, give us what it is that we need to live in this word of truth, to live out this word of truth. to live it out it's that's vital we got to be willing amen to to eat to to even be chastised we got to be willing to be rebuked we got to be willing to accept rebuke reprove and chastisement so that we can walk in this truth so that we can obey the word of god so that we can overcome our fleshly nature. We must, it's, in, it's important that, amen, that look, we spend our time, we spend our energy, we spend our effort, we spend everything that we got in, in, in getting this truth. And even when things come about and when things come up, that we measure it up against this word of truth. So that so that we can stay free. So that we will not be in bondage of the Yebo Shadadasia of the enemy. Because it is the truth of this word that gives us the power. The authority to overcome um, every work of the enemy. It is the truth, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is the truth. So let us incline our ears to wisdom and apply our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Apply our hearts to understanding. Let us cry out for discernment. Let us lift up our voices for understanding. For as we seek for it, surely it shall be found. Surely that God shall give it unto us. And then Proverbs 4 and 5 says, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. My Lord. So do not forsake her, and she will guard you. Talking about this word, this word of truth. Said, so love her, and she will watch over you. This word, this word, this word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It will give us what it is that we need. So that, amen, we can stop lying to ourselves and lying to others. Let us take this truth and begin to walk it out in our day-to-day living. Let us take this truth and begin 
to live it out, amen, in our day-to-day living. Oh, how we bless the name of God in this place on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be unto the Lord in this place. The Christ said, if you eat from him, you have everlasting life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you for joining us in the church on tonight. It has definitely been an amazing time with you, and I thank you for being with us. Amen. I thank you guys for joining around the world. Know that you can interact with us weekly on our social media platforms. On Twitter, it's In The Church Live. On Instagram and Facebook, it is at In The Church. You can also send us comments or send us any topic that you would like for us to discuss. Right over to us by visiting the In The Church dot com website and we would definitely look forward to hearing from you amen in the name of Jesus glory be unto God we will be back in the church next Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time amen go ahead and set your clock set your your calendar amen to join us right here in the church as we look forward to having a high time with you next week we'll conclude our guard your mouth series amen our guard your mouth series next week we're going to talk about idle words in the church and i'm so looking forward to it and then we will cut this series there and we will go into our series on prayer and we have some dynamic people that is lined up amen to come and fellowship with us in the presence of the Lord amen to come in fellowship in the presence of the Lord and talk about prayer amen to talk about prayer with us we're going to have Miss um, Anita Bailey Bradley Anita Bradley I'm sorry about that Miss Anita amen um, glory to God thank you Jesus she's going to come and we're going to be talking about um, the power of prayer and we're going to have as well Mr. Timothy um, Roberts he's going to come and join us and we're going to have another special guest to come and join us in the church to just deal with different topics of prayer so I'm excited <clears throat> about our guest that's coming up even for I guess it's coming up in May and I guess it's coming up in June I'm just absolutely excited here in the church on tonight and so <clears throat> with that being said again thank you for joining us in the church where we are shining the light on it all the good the bad and the ugly exposing it line by line precept by precept against the truth so that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free we will be back next week at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time until next time let us go in the love, the joy, the peace, the favor and the anointing of our most holy Savior who is none other than Jesus Christ and it is in his most holy and majestic name that we have convened in the church Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the absolute glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.